Welcome to Pioneer, the podcast series for serious innovators, brought to you by Raise. Here, we talk to innovative entrepreneurs, CEOs, scientists, and policymakers about innovation. The idea of the Rhino Hyde system was originally conceived almost 15 years ago when a much younger Mark Berryman borrowed his parents' new four-wheel drive for a road trip up north with some close mates. His father's parting words were, don't take it off-road, you'll scratch it. As the young men ventured down a fairly tame track looking for adventure, these words were soon forgotten. All was going well until they brushed past a bunch of branches. Unbeknownst to them, the soft-looking leaves hit a fairly solid branch which proceeded to gouge a deep scratch into the paintwork from the front quarter panel all the way to the rear. Mark's heart sank as he inspected the damage. There was no way to hide it. It was now going to be a permanent feature on the vehicle. That was the forerunner to the Rhino Hyde system. I am pleased today to be talking with Rhino Hyde's founder and CEO, Mark Berryman. Hello, Mark. Thanks for coming in today. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me. Mark, um, can you tell us what Rhino Hide does and what the innovation is? Yeah, sure. Um, so Rhino Hide itself um, is a completely uh, unique product. Um, it's a removable and reusable paintwork protection system that can be attached to the exterior of your four-wheel drive in a matter of minutes. Um, and once it's attached, it becomes a tough armour between the vehicle and the harsh off-road environment. So it allows drivers to venture further off-road without the fear of um, damaging any part of their car that's covered by the Rhino Hide system. That's interesting. I, I actually thought it was some sort of film that you paint on, but that's not correct. No, it's actually a rigid ABS plastic. So um, it's a high impact and thermally stabilised ABS, and it's held in place with strong neodymium magnets, and the internal face is actually lined with neoprene, which is wetsuit material. So it's nice and soft on your car, but it's a really strong, tough armour on the outside. Okay, interesting. So is that for all cars or just particular makes you're, you're, you're targeting here? So we're, we're targeting the higher-end four-wheel drives at this stage. Uh, ultimately, we're looking to expand the range as we grow as a business. But right. at the moment, we've got the FJ Cruiser, the Ford Ranger Dual Cab, and also the 200 Series Land Cruiser coming in August. So okay. starting and, and to spread the range. Yeah, oh, that's great. And so is, is this like a, a one-on-one sale or you're trying to get into car card manufacturers, what, what, what's your sort of marketing? Yeah, at, at the moment we're going business to business, um, so we're selling to car dealerships and aftermarket stores, and at the moment we've uh, secured about 18 distributors around Australia. Fabulous, fabulous. Yeah, from Queensland to Western Australia. Fabulous. Is there anything like this around, a competitor? No, no, right. it's just really unique in, in okay. itself. So uh, there, there are some film wraps, uh, the actually more expensive and, and don't do anything like what the Rhino Hide does. Right. So is this your brainchild or is... Yeah. It is, yeah. I came so, up with it um, originally when I was 17. Wow. Well, you look <laughs> um, a bit older than that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually borrowed my mum's car uh, yeah. and took it up north with some mates on a fishing yeah. trip. And, um, yeah, they, they specifically said to me, my parents said, do not take that off-road. And right. obviously the first thing we did was take it yeah. off-road. Yeah. And I put yeah. a huge scratch from one end to the other. Right. Um, and that's when I, I sort of thought, you know, there's, there's got to be a better way to protect these four-wheel drives off-road. Right. Yeah. Um, and the original sort of uh, interpretation of Rhino Hide uh, was made in my parents' back shed. Okay, so you've given <laughs> your parents shares in the company? <laughs> <laughs> they actually do own 2.5% of the business. Oh, there you go. Okay. Well, that, <laughs> they that, did invest in it. <laughs> yeah. oh, fabulous. So how long has it taken to get this far in the company's journey and what have been some of the main learning points? Um, so I probably, around three or three years ago, um, I'd, I'd myself been involved in construction uh, for a long time and lived in the UK for almost seven years and I, I got back and wanted a bit of a change and... I actually thought, you know, Rhino Hyde's always been in the back of my mind, but I, I wonder if it exists. And I was thinking, surely it exists out there somewhere, um, and, and did some research on it and, and realised, hang on, this is still a unique idea. Um, and I actually did come into Ray's and, right. and sat down. I was like, you know, is, is this a patentable idea? And yeah. uh, after some investigation, yeah, it, it looked like it was a real goer. Yeah. Um, yep. Oh, great. And, yeah, so that, that's when I committed to it. So it's been about three years to get to this stage since. So since three we've... years from concept to actually having sales? Yeah, from the initial sort of design, serious right. design. I yeah. forget when I was 17, you know, I had a lot of ideas then, but when I decided, look, maybe I'm going to pursue this more seriously, and, um, yeah, I'd say two years of when I quit my job and right. thought, that's, that's it. I that's a big milestone, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> sold, sold my house, uh, put all the funds into the business. Wow, and, that's uh, great. Yeah, really well, that was not great, but, I mean, that's, that well, shows... Well, it's great now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, excellent. So... 
Where do you see Rhino Hyde in the next 12 months and, and what challenges do you think you face? I mean, the economy is... Who knows what the economy's doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm not too confident with the economy, but um, I think... Uh, if, if you just look at past recessions and that sort of thing, people tend to spend more on uh, holidaying within Australia. Um, I think you, you'll find that that caravan and camping sort of scene actually increases when the economy's down a little bit. People think, I'll just go in my own backyard rather than on the big overseas yep, trips. So yep, I think yep, yep. Rhino Hyde certainly is an ancillary product to that market. It's pretty good. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, so for the next 12 months within Australia, we're looking to just grow the product range. Um, we're aiming to have about six different models um, right, within okay. the next 12 months. Any thoughts of licensing overseas or anything like that? And, and that's probably where we're looking. Within, okay. I'd, I'd hope within 12 months we're looking seriously at a, a US licensing deal. Right, so um, someone out there listening to this who might be interested? Yeah. You, in the you happy to have a chat? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, okay. Okay. Um, we're actually talking to a couple of people in South Africa at the moment who right. are quite interested in taking on the product at okay. uh, you know, early stages of discussion there. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, ultimately, I've always said the, the US market, I think, is a real big one for this right. product. Okay. Military, police, anything like that? Yeah, we've had a little bit of interest from the police force in, okay. in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and military applications, we're, we're working on that at the moment too, just trying to get some inroads in there. Um, I think it's great for them. They're able to change camouflage instantly and working on a couple of different innovations that might be able to help them in, in other areas too. So. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think yeah. of that. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's really, really a versatile product. Great, Mark. Um, are any new innovations planned? And if so, can you describe them to us without giving away any confidential or patentable information? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, the, the big innovation we're looking for uh, at the moment is to be able to customise the panels. So ultimately, we want the final customer to be able to pick a colour or design and us produce that and, and deliver it to them. Um, right. at, at this stage, we're looking at minimum order quantities of 50 sets of any one colour or design. So right. it becomes okay. a bit tricky to do that customisation. But yep. We're certainly looking into different technologies and methods to be able to customise more easily for the, for the final uh, user of the product. Right, so do you see like a Telstra fleet of vehicles? Is that kind of what you mean? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you have a business and you want the logo on the car through the week, but you don't really want it on the car on the weekend. Or you um, want to change the advertising week one to week two or month one to month two. Absolutely. You know, special on now, something... Yeah, yeah, totally. And you can put it on the car and take it off and, right. and okay. it will transfer to different yeah. vehicles in the fleet. So um, it's more than just a protection. It's, it's kind of got a whole other potential, hasn't it? Yeah, that's the whole secondary income stream. And right. that's probably looking away from four-wheel drives themselves and potentially just into you know, more, more standard cars, but using the advertising side of it. Right, because people use wraps now and they're kind of expensive and easily Permanent. damaged. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, that's, that's exciting. That's exciting. So what advice would you give to budding entrepreneurs listening to this? I know you've been on Shark Tank, for instance. Was, would, yes. you, would you say run away or would you say that was a great learning experience? No, I think Shark Tank was fantastic. Right. Um, yeah, if, if you're well prepared, Shark yeah. Tank's fantastic. Right. If, uh, Must have been uh, quite intimidating, I would have thought. Oh, it certainly was. It's yeah. one take. There's no... It, it is what you see on television. Right. You walk in there and you pitch. And Have you met really these people pitch. before you walk you in? You don't meet them or anything. No. Wow, okay. Sort of that makes in, it in, in and that's it. You're right. really put up uh, in front of them and, and you have to nail it. You know, so right. It's quite intimidating. Right. I don't think I've ever been so nervous in my life. Right. <laughs> right. But you, you did mention you you know putting your house up and you're out there, you know, you've, you've put boots and all into this. So, and that's, that's a relatively common story with entrepreneurs. Um, yeah. What, I mean, what else? I mean, would you do this all over again if you if you knew, know what you know now? Um, yeah, well, I'd have to say yes. Uh, yeah, I, I think I would. Uh, I think I probably would have sought a bit more advice earlier days. Um, a real turning point for me was when Ray's actually sponsored me to do the ignition course. Oh, that's right. You did that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that that was a huge turning point in the, right. in the business. I mean. From a product point of view, I developed a prototype. I, I had what I believed to be like the final working product, if you like. Yep. But I just had no real direction of how am I going to get this to market? How am right. I going to get the exposure and that sort of thing? Okay. And that ignition course certainly put me on the right track there. Okay. Uh, that was that was brilliant. Um, right. And then on the back of that, I managed to pitch to the WA Angels, who's an investor group in Perth. Had you done any of this before? Have you got like a background in presentations or anything? Or you just kind of... Jumped in boots and all. No, yeah, a bit of boots and all. I mean, right. my, my background's in project management and construction. Okay. Yeah. So I actually did a degree initially at Curtin University. And right. Yeah, then went into quantity surveying, project management, yeah. that so sort of thing. So all this corporate stuff was 
new to you? Well, I suppose uh, a lot of my background is in contract law and that oh, sort of thing, okay. um, and certainly used to running tenders and, and subcontracting out huge parts of uh, high-value work. So I think certainly in, in terms of my product, I was never concerned about subcontracting out the elements of work that I didn't know myself. I right. was quite confident with that. Um, okay. So I think that certainly helped from the project management side. But yep. the, the pitching to investors side, that was certainly brand new. You know? Right. I've done okay. a couple of pitches in you know, trying to win work uh, for a construction company, but certainly never anything... As intimidating as okay. Shark Tank. Well, your house and everything's on the line, isn't it? You know, so, so just talking of Shark Tank and, and pitching and to investors, and that is raising capital. Is, did you find that? I mean, without you know being nervous and having to do it, but yeah. was it easy to find? Or I mean, three years is pretty quick. So you obviously got capital somewhere relatively quickly. Uh, well, the, the the original capital came from my house sale, so okay. I put yeah. in probably about one hundred and fifty thousand wow. dollars of my own money initially to get yeah. it. And then, that certainly, I, I didn't expect to be spending the 150000 but it really got to the point where all that money was gone. Right. And I, okay. I had the prototype and I think 50 sets for the FJ Cruiser ready um, right. to, to be put into production. Yep. Um, and then it was really a point of, I need to raise some capital here to take this to the next level. Um, that's when I did the ignition course, that gave me a really good direction of where I should be going um, to, to seek that capital. Um, and I was actually approached by the WA Angels initially. Um, one of the guys that uh, is associated with them had heard about my product and mm -hmm. knew that I was looking for capital. Yep. Um, and I pitched to them thinking, well, I'm not really sure if these guys are going to go for it. <laughs> They're yeah, yeah. probably more in the tech world and yeah, this is like yeah, an yeah. old school product. Yeah, um, yeah. But they loved it and jumped on board and that was about a week before Shark Tank. So right. then I went right. into the Shark Tank with a yeah. bit of ammo knowing that yeah. I've already raised some capital. Yeah. Um, I think that certainly helped as well, you know, a bit of confidence that, yeah. no, this is a product that people invest in. But there's a whole bunch of other stuff besides finance, isn't there? I mean, you, you've, you've had to find a manufacturer, I, I guess. Yes. You've had to find sales channels. You've had to do all of that. How, yeah. How did, you, how did you find a manufacturer? I mean, like... uh, and initially, I uh, found a manufacturer in Western Australia. and I put it out to tender like I would with anything from right. my previous okay. experience. So I found the right manufacturers or the, the manufacturers I thought would be right to do the job um, and, and put it to tender, really. Yeah. Um, but I didn't have a lot of luck with Western Australia. It right. was, yeah, that was definitely a steep learning curve and a lot of money wasted, right. which was unfortunate. But um, that drove me offshore, so I ended up going to China. Okay. Uh, went over there and actually met with the factories. And, right, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. it's nice to be able to look someone in the eye and you know, shake their hand and, yeah. Yeah. and make sure they really do exist. Yeah. And, and yeah. I've got a fantastic manufacturer in China now. Oh, uh, fantastic. A small, yeah. small family business. Yeah. And they've actually, in the last two years since I've met them, they've grown phenomenally. Wow. Like they are, okay. They're turning out like 10,000 television backs wow. a month. Wow. So they can, <laughs> they can scale up for your businesses. You oh, know? absolutely. Yeah, yeah their scalability yeah. is there. Every right. single time I go over there, they're buying new CNC machines and all this plant and equipment, taking on more floors. It's, right. You know, okay. think I've got a rapid growth. You want to see what they're doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Mark, I've really enjoyed chatting with you, and it's a fantastic story, so good luck in the future. Yeah, thanks. And uh, stay in touch. We'd love to hear how you go. I oh, will do, certainly. Thanks, Thank Mark. you very much. If you'd like to know more about Rhinohide, please visit www.rhinohide.com.au or check them out on social media handle hash rhinohide 4 by 4 Thanks for joining us today for the Ray's Innovator Series. If you would like to know more about today's topic, please email us raise at raise.com.au.